This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid MIDI Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Media Composer 101 tutorial and in this lesson we're going to keep the discussion on bins going because there's a lot to talk about when it comes to organization. Now we started to talk a little bit about that in the previous lesson when we got into creating bin views and even creating our own columns inside of bins. But there's a lot more in-depth stuff that we can do inside of bins to really tailor them to work the way that you are most comfortable working with. Whether you're new to Media Composer or coming from another you know, non-linear editing application, possibly like Final Cut Pro 7, Media Composer is really designed to work the way that you want it to work. And in this lesson, I'm going to give you some cool tips and tricks to show you just what I mean by that. Okay, let's keep our introduction short, let's just get into Media Composer, and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously an alt and tab for all my Windows friends out there. And I've created a bin, and this is a little bit of a carryover from our previous lesson, but in this bin, what I've tried to do is to bring in or create some different types of clips that you might have at any given time inside of one of the bins that you're working with. For example, I have a title here that I, that I called and, and actually created appropriately enough called Just a Title. Uh, I've got a motion effect here that's basically just a slow motion I didn't get too fancy and too specific with it. I just wanted a clip that was an actual motion effect that you can see is a motion effect in my bin. I've got a sequence here, of course. I've got some AMA Link 2 clips, an audio only clip, and some just regular importer. These could even be captured clips inside of my bin. Okay, now the first thing that I want to talk about is the different bin layouts that we have. Now, this is list view here. You'll see it's fairly self explanatory. Basically, everything is given to you in list form. You'll see that we have all the clips just listed one right after the other inside of the bin. Okay, And to change the view of the bin that we're working in, it's actually very easy. You'll see right down here at the bottom, we actually have three different bin views. We have our list view, we have what's called storyboard view, and we have frame view. Now, I'm going to jump over to storyboard view first. Storyboard view looks a little bit like this and what this gives you the ability or you know more specifically an assistant or a producer the ability to do is to really get in and tailor these however you want to tailor them. So let's say for example I wanted to call this shot you know this is a shot of BMX biking at sunset. Okay. And of course, again, we could come in and we could, you know, add this in, you know, really in-depth descriptions, whether it's, you know, whether we're working on episodic television or even just, you know, documentary, even a montage of what exactly is contained in each one of these shots. Now, of course, when I come back to list view here, you'll see that what happens is, is that a new column has appeared because I have typed in, in the comment section of that specific clip, when I come back to my uh, list view, you'll see here it is right here. This is a shot of BMX biking at sunset. So I know that this clip is the one of, of course, BMX biking at sunset. Now, of course, if I wanted to get in and create a different view for this bin inside a list view, I could easily do that and call this, let's call this clips with comments. Why not? Okay. And that's basically the purpose of storyboard view, for you to get in and really storyboard things and to get really descriptive on what each one of these shots, sequences, or any other element might be or might do. Now really, I, to be honest, I've been working in Media Composer a long time. I really don't use this view very much. The way that I started working in Media Composer was in Frame View. Now here's Frame View right here, and you'll see that it's actually located right beside List View, because in most cases, you're either working in List View or you're working in Frame View. Now here's Frame View right here. Now you'll see the only issue with the frames is that they're kind of small. Now, of course, we can get in and easily adjust that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press Command and L on the Mac, Control and L on Windows, and I'm just gonna blow these clips up pretty large, okay? Now, of course, they've disappeared in the frame, but that's okay, I'm just gonna jump all the way up to the top of the bin, I'm gonna jump all the way over to the left here, and you'll see that they're still laid out just as they were when they were a lot smaller. I'm just gonna zoom back. Now, to zoom back is Command and K on the Mac, Control and K on Windows. To zoom in again, Command and L, Control and L for Windows, okay? But in most cases, how you work inside a frame view is with the frames at their largest possible size. Now, of course, I've zoomed in. They're laid out pretty much exactly the way that they were when they were small frames. But I really need to get in and have all of these contained within a window. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to define the bin size, the size that I want, kind of like that. 
and I'm going to navigate up to the bin drop down and right down at the bottom you'll see that I can actually fill the window with all of the different, well I'll say elements, I'm not going to necessarily say clips, but right now the bin is now filled properly with all of the elements inside of this timeline. Okay, now what's also very cool about these clips is that if I need to see a preview of any one of them, all I need to do is simply select the one that I want to see a preview of. Even if it's a 4K clip, I can simply select it. Now this is an AMA Link 2 clip. I'll be curious to see how well it plays back. This one's not, not exactly the best example to use. Let me actually pick one that we might actually see a little bit of playback with right here. There we go. You can see now, of course, again, 4K AMA Link 2. The people are playing back, not exactly playing back, you know, in real time. If this was transcoded, it would play back perfectly in real time. But I could pick really any one of these clips that I've transcoded. Let's just pick, um, let's pick this one here. And I'm just going to play this one here. And you'll see that this one plays back in real time, no problem, inside of my bin. Now the purpose of this is, of course, just for preview mode. Once I've actually chosen the clip that I like, what I would have to do is double click on it and mark the in and out points of the area that I want to select and then edit that into my timeline. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit more about organization again inside of frame view because there's some very cool things that you can do in this view that are new in a more recent update to Media Composer. I believe it may have even been in version 8.3 that they implemented this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back to my bin settings for just a second. Now actually I think before I do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to list view. And one thing that I love to do in list view is I always have lists or clips with colors because I might like to get in and say okay you know uh, let's just pick some here. I'm just going to select all these clips and I'm just going to select them to none because I think that this clip, this clip, that clip, this one, and what, well, it looks like we're almost picking every other clip here. These ones here, as well as those two, are not good. I'm never going to use those ones, but this one, these two, and these ones here, uh, let's not actually not pick them all. Let's pick some of them. These ones here are good. These ones here are maybe. Okay? And what I have the ability to do, and you'll see that, it, that, you know, as great as that is inside of list view, as soon as I switch over to frame view, I lose all that information. But I actually don't. What I'm going to do is head back to my bin settings here. And right down here in frame view, I'm going to say show border colors, and I'm going to say use the clip color. I'm going to say OK. And as soon as I do now, you'll now see that each one of the clips inside of my bin now has a border around it, assuming I assigned it a color inside of list view. But now I can get in and have a visual representation of exactly what I saw inside of list view inside of bin view. A very, very handy feature. And again, a new one that was included in one of the point updates of version 8 of Media Composer. Now, what's also very cool about this layout here, and what I'm going to do is just come back to my bin setting here for a second. I'm actually going to switch this from the show border colors use clip color to the show border colors use color based on object type option. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the bin settings over here so that when I say OK, you'll see how the clips change inside of my bin. As soon as I do that, they have now changed colors. They're now no longer represented the way that they were before. So what exactly does all of this different information mean? Well, what they represent, and you'll see that I have a few different colors. I have green, I have blue, and I have red inside of my bin. What they represent is blue represents pre-computes and source side motion effects. You'll see that this clip right here is actually a motion effect clip, and you'll see that right above it, or actually you know, two rows above it, I have that title that I had created. Those, are, of course, are tagged as blue. Green represents master clips. Dark green would represent sub clips if I had any. Red represents sequence. Of course I have my sequence called main sequence. And last but certainly not least, purple would represent any media files we might have inside of the media tool. Now again for me, I don't normally use this setting what I normally use is the use clip color settings if I happen to be inside of my uh, frame view. And this is really only if I have a producer in the room beside me and they actually want to see all of the clips inside of the bin very quickly, very easily. I might call up this view for them. And of course, I'm going to want to identify quickly which clips I want to use and which clips that I do not want to use. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more. Another sort of cool little feature, organizational feature inside of Media Composer. What I'm going to do is just switch back to list view here for just one second. And that is about how you can sift through or sort through clips or, you know, time codes 
or clip names, durations inside of your bins. It's actually very easy. In most cases, what you find yourself doing is either sifting through things like the color column because maybe you wanna put all of the clips that you're going to use together. Maybe it's gonna be duration. You wanna see all of the clips that are very specific duration. It's actually very easy to do. What we're gonna do is we're gonna select the column name. In this case, I'll select duration. And what I'm gonna press is Command and E on the Mac, Control and E on Windows to sort that from the lowest value to the highest value. Now, of course, that does beg the question, what if I want to swap that order? Well, instead of pressing Command and E, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press Command, Option and E, Control, Alt and E for all my Windows friends out there, and now it's gonna swap the order from highest to lowest. Now, what's also very cool is this is, of course, very easy to do based on a numeric value. It would be the same with a tape or the you know starter end time code columns. In most cases, you find yourself, like I said, doing this with duration. But how this also works very well is with the color column. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to sort that by colors, and you'll see that I now have all of the light colors together, which is a very easy way to get in and say, oh, okay, these are all the clips that I want to use, and these are all the clips that I don't want to use. Okay. Now, a couple of other things that I want to talk about before we wrap up here. Now, I think what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create a couple more titles. To give you an example of a situation you might run into, this is another title. We'll just save this, okay? And we'll just save it again. This is another title. And what I'm going to do, what, and this is another title two, and I'm just going to copy that, okay? So that way, when I create a, another new title, Okay, and I'm just gonna say title tool. We're gonna call this, this is another title two. This is another title three. We're gonna close this up now. Okay, so here's a situation that's very common that you're gonna run into in the edit suite. Okay, a lot of people when they work now, you know, organization is key to your workflow. But sometimes, you know, I know it's hard to stay as organized as you might want to be, and you might run into a situation where you have a bin looking like the bin that I have, except you've got like you know a hundred times as many clips in here that has titles and subclips and clips and all this type of jazz in the bin and you really don't want to see any of that but you don't really want to delete it or go through and organize everything you just want to just hide them for now and there doesn't seem to be a very obvious way to do that but there actually is what we can do is we can navigate down to the fast menu and what i'm going to do is i'm going to navigate up to my set bin display option Inside a set bin display. Now, for example, a great situation like this is let's say you had a timeline where you went through and you re uh, you rebuilt all the titles, and you suddenly then had 200 titles in a bin, and you didn't want to go through and resort them and do all that type of stuff. You just wanted that every time you updated a title and it appears in the bin, you don't see it because it's really too much. Well, what you have the ability to do is to come in here and simply say, well, you know what, Media Composer don't show me any of the effects clips inside of my bin. Now I could say effects, and let's see, what else do I have in here? Let's just say um, AMA link to master clips. We got anything else in here? I think that's pretty good. Um, you know what, I think I got a motion effect in here. Let's choose motion effects as well. So the only thing that I'm gonna be left with is the master clips and the sequence. I'm simply gonna say okay and take a look at that. All I now have is the master clips. Now the audio, of course, is considered a master clip and the main sequence. Now, don't forget, none of these have been actually deleted. They're just being hidden so that you don't see them, okay? Now, another cool feature right down here at the bottom of the bin is, of course, the ability to come in. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to come back to my set bin display. I'm just gonna turn back on my effects. I'll turn on my linked master clips and the motion effects here. And what I wanna do is I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna type in title, okay? And you'll see that as I type in title, what's gonna happen is only the clips, or in this case, the effects that are named with title are going to appear in the search dialog box down here located at the bottom of your bin. Okay, last thing that I wanna show you in this lesson, okay? And this is a great one. Now, what I'm gonna do with my main sequence is I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna add a few more clips. And let's just make sure that we're not adding the same clip in here. So 944 we've already added. Let's add this one in here. Now, to be honest, there aren't really any good clips or bad clips. I just did that as an example here because all these clips are actually very good, okay? Now, here's a situation that you might run into all of the time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything in my bin except my main sequence, and I'm going to delete them. Now, I'm not going to delete the media. I'm only going to delete the master clips. I'm going to leave all the media, okay? And I'm going to say, okay, now you'll see that the only thing that I'm left with is the main sequence, okay? 
So the question now is, is that if I come back and I want to match frame this clip, okay? If I match frame and say, okay, well, show me what bin this clip is located in. Well, Media Composer can't find it because technically this clip doesn't exist in a bin anywhere. It was last known to be in the green clips bin, but it might have been moved somewhere else. Well, you know what? That clip still exists because it's in my timeline. The only thing is I can't see it in my bin. So how do I get Media Composer to show me clips that are associated with my timeline that may have just accidentally had the master clip deleted for it? Well, it's very simple. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to head back to set bin display. And inside of set bin display, what I'm going to have Media Composer do is to show me the reference clips or the clips that are referenced by this sequence in my bin. As soon as I do that, you'll see there are the four clips, one, two, three, four. We actually have five clips there, probably because one of these clips has been doubled up here. Yep, 948 has been doubled up. But you'll see now, instead of it giving me that error when I try to find the bin that this clip is located in, it finds it right away. This is a great way if you know, you've been given a bin by somebody that has all the media on your system and you've relinked it, although you know, media is linked back to that sequence, but you don't have any of the master clips, to quickly get access to them so that you can maybe get in and tweak the shot if necessary, in your timeline. Okay, so I think that wraps up our look at bins. We've gone really in depth, so you should really have a good understanding of how not only to set bins up to get you organized, but to keep you organized as well. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor, Video Guys, and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase, including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson, or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.